I keep seeing Ravens fans going crazy about this, but in my honest opinion, I really don't think they should, especially when you look at things from a business point of view. Uh, a lot of Ravens fans have been, they've been tripping, they've been going crazy, they've been getting upset, they've been getting frustrated about the Ravens having visits with Anthony Richardson, a quarterback from the Florida Gators. Uh, he is projected to be a first-round pick. I, I've seen some projections say he could be a third-round pick, but y'all know how all this talk goes pre-draft. It's a lot of smoke screens out there, so just a lot of fillers. It's, it's just a lot of all kind of different conversations when it comes to different players for different reasons. But Anthony Richardson has been one of the most talked about prospects heading into the draft at the quarterback position. Um, that's why when it was said multiple times that the Baltimore Ravens have had visits with them, have gone to visit him, have had discussions with him and all that good stuff, a lot of fans, they freaked out. They got worried. They got scared. They got stressed. And I understand with the whole Lamar Jackson situation, it is very, very stressful. It is frustrating. It's, uh, it's just like it's not going away. It's, it's not getting resolved. And I know so many Ravens fans are just ready for whatever that next step is going to be. Great or not so great. Uh, but we're just wondering what's going to happen and when is it going to happen. But with the Ravens, with them having visits with Anthony Richardson, I don't think it's a big deal because it's due diligence. Now, I know we hear that word, that phrase, that term due diligence so much and so often with the Baltimore Ravens. Usually when there's a, a free agent that all of us as Ravens fans are interested in, uh, but the Ravens, they do their due diligence on that free agent uh, just to get a feel for the player, uh, talk to the player, see how much the player would be. Uh, but then after that, we don't really hear anything a lot of times. Well, especially if it's on offense. But anyway, another conversation for another day. But with Anthony Richardson, you got to think about it from a business point of view. Think about if you have an employee. With this employee, you're like, hey, this employee tells you, hey, I want to raise. I want to make some more money at my position. And you're like, okay, all right, I know what you've done for this company. Um, all right, this is what we're going to offer you. There you go. There's your raise. Do you like it? You, you agree to it? Um, so you pass him over that paper. He looks it over. Say, no, that's, that's not good enough. I, I, need, I need more than that. I need something better than that. And you, as the, uh, the employer, you may look like, uh, well, I'll think about it. And, and y'all continue to have conversation back and forth about this pay raise. And then this employee, he tells you, you know what? I want to go work for a different company. Since y'all not going to pay me what I want to be paid, what I feel like I should be paid, I want to go work for a different company. What are you going to do as the employer? Are you going to sit back and wait around and be like, all right, you know what? We're not going to look at any other options just in case things go south uh, with this employee. No, you're going to look at other options, too. You're, first and foremost, you're going to hope that you can come to a resolution with this employee, that things could be worked out because this is one of your best employees. But, like we always say, anything's possible until it ain't possible no more. And until your employee actually signs that raise, signs to accept that raise, then there's a chance that they may not be your employee for much longer. And you, you have to realize that you cannot just go with your heart when it comes to things like this. Because if teams, if businesses went with their heart when it came to a lot of their employees, those businesses would not make it out alive. And it's the same thing with the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson. Their heart says, or may have said, who don't, I don't know where their heart is at the moment. It don't really seem too good right now, but their heart might have said, hey, we want Lamar Jackson to be our guy. We want Lamar Jackson to be a Baltimore Raven for the foreseeable future. We want to get him signed to a long-term contract so we can lock him up for years. We want him as our guy, QB1 or QB8. Hopefully he will be QB1 eventually, but we'll see. But they know at the same time, it's a possibility that this thing takes a different turn. 
It's a possibility that Lamar Jackson is not a Baltimore Raven for the foreseeable future. So in that case, you have to have contingency plans. You have to have backup options. You have to have other things and other scenarios that you have to consider. They looked at Jacoby Brissett and Baker Mayfield and even tried to sign a Baker Mayfield. But Baker Mayfield said, no, I'm straight. When that news came out, initially I was like, whoa, Baker Mayfield turned down the Ravens. But then I thought about it. I was like, oh, the Ravens, they went after Baker Mayfield. Okay. I mean, I get it because stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. This Lamar situation, we don't know how it's going to go. Ravens probably don't even know how it's going to go. So they looking at other options as just in case. Anthony Richardson, he's another option just in case. I don't think it's anything to, to trip over or get upset or aggravated or frustrated or anything like that. And again, of course, everybody's entitled to how they feel about stuff. I, I can't sit up here and say, no, you don't get frustrated at that. Don't get upset at No, 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 no. I can't tell you how to feel. I can tell you how I feel. And I'm like, okay, they, they talking to Anthony Richardson? Yeah, I'm sure they talk to other quarterbacks too. And you know, they talk to Baker Mayfield. They try to talk to Jacoby Brissett. They, they, they're talking to different people because they know what the situation is. We know what the situation is. Everybody knows what the situation is. And, but at the same time, a lot of people don't know what the situation is going to be. And since they don't know what it's going to be, nothing is confirmed right now. Nothing is set in stone right now as to who the Baltimore Ravens starting quarterback will be. So you got to have options. You, you want to do your homework on other things because you don't want to get caught lacking. You don't want to get caught slipping. And I mean, really, in my opinion, like 99% of moves that the Ravens could make at the quarterback position, 99% of the moves that they made, if, if it was anybody other than Lamar Jackson, I think it would be a downgrade. I think it would definitely be a downgrade. Not to say that another quarterback can't come in and, and do his thing. And not to take away from anybody else, whether rookie or vet, whoever. But it just, I just feel like there would be a lack there. It wouldn't be the same. But as far as the Ravens, they got to do what's best for the Ravens. It's business. Just like with Lamar Jackson right now, he's got to do what's best for him. It's business. Both sides, they, they trying to do what's best for, for themselves. And a lot of us hope that in the process, they can come together and they can cut to a resolution with each other. That includes still being with each other, but we know things happen. So Ravens are just preparing just in case. Just in case. Just in case that employee that we talked about earlier, they decide, you know what? I'm going to go work for another company. I don't want to work for this company anymore. I don't want to be here. I don't. So Ravens, this is just them staying ready so they ain't got to get ready. And I'm sure there will be more quarterbacks that they talk to. And I'm sure they probably talked to other ones already. They probably looked at other ones already as options. My, again, my, minus Baker Mayfield. Take out Anthony Richards. I'm sure there are other guys that they looked at too. It's not just those guys. Because, again, you, you got to have a plan. And Eric DeCosta said this before, too. He said this at the, the two presses ago, where he said, we got like five, six different contingency plans. And I'm sure he does. They have to. Now, I hope the plan that ends up happening is one where Lamar is the Baltimore Ravens quarterback. But right now, I don't think it's looking like it. Doesn't look good to me. But, again, that's just my opinion. I don't know nothing from nothing. So we'll see how it goes. But as far as them speaking with Anthony Richardson and really any other prospects that they speak to, in my opinion, I, I, I just don't think it's a big deal. And I think it's just it's business. Due diligence, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready, even though if you had kept Lamar, you could be even more ready. But at the same time, who knows what's going to happen. Steam, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And like, I think it's still looking like Lamar Jackson could end up being this offseason when it comes to being with the Baltimore Ravens. 
I'm out. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Shout out to Graven.